In this video, we will be looking at options for connecting the solar panels to the charge controller, including series, parallel, and series parallel configurations. If you have not seen the previous videos in this series, I encourage you to watch them first because one video tends to build on the other. To begin the discussion, we will assume a couple of things. The panels are 20 volt panels, and they are also 50 watt panels which provides 2.5 amps per panel. In the simplest configuration, two panels with their positives connected and their negatives connected is known as parallel, and in fact, the typical suitcase solar panel will be connected this way. In other words, a 100 watt panel at 20 volts and 5 amps. If, however, we connect the panel in series, which sometimes is called daisy chain, we connect the positive voltage going to the charge controller to the positive of one panel, the negative of that panel to the positive of the second panel, and then the negative of that second panel back to the charge controller. This results in doubling the voltage with the original current. So in other words, we again have a 100 watt panel array with now 40 volts and the same 2.5 amps that a single panel would have. I've painted the connection between the two panels blue as a transition because it is the positive on one panel and negative on the other panel. And in my Renogy 100 watt suitcase, you can see the interconnection between the two panels here. And sure enough, they're connected in parallel. You see a red wire from both solar panels going to one lug, and the black wires from the two panels to the other lug. In two parallel connected panels, the current will double and the voltage will stay the same, and in two series connected panels, the voltage will double and the current stays the same. If you know Ohm's law and the difference between parallel and serial, this is just basic Ohm's law, nothing different here. Finally, in a series parallel configuration, we combine both series and parallel into a four panel array. And if you study this drawing, you'll see two sets of panels that are parallel connected, and those in turn are connected in series. So in this situation, we double the current and we double the voltage. Of course, that takes four panels to do that. When should you use parallel connected panels? If you have a PWM charge controller, you have no choice. You must use a parallel connected panel because of the voltage issue. You cannot use a higher voltage than what the battery needs. Also, since the parallel configuration results in a higher current going down the drop line, then the panel, charge controller, and battery must be relatively close together. This is due to our old friend, the voltage drop along the wires, which we discussed in length in video 3. Next, when should we use series connected panels? If we have an MPPT charger, we can connect panels in parallel or series or a combination of both. However, the MPPT panels generally have a maximum voltage that the solar panel array can be. We can connect panels in series up to that voltage. If you recall in a previous video, I installed the Victron MPPT controller that was 75 volts and 15 amps. I can connect panels in series up to 75 volts. Also, if we have long wiring distances, the current that we have to pass through the wires is minimized, so the voltage drop issue is going to be less if we use a series configuration. So series configurations generally are more preferable. And finally, when do you use a series parallel configuration? Well again, this requires an MPPT charge controller, and it maximizes the advantages of both series and parallel configurations. It's no mystery then that series parallel configurations are often used in large installations of solar power in RVs. And in fact, if you connect multiple portable suitcase chargers, you're really doing a serial parallel configuration as well. Remember, the two panels that come in a typical suitcase are parallel connected, and if you connect two suitcase kits together in series, you have a series parallel configuration. And the easiest way to parallel panels is to get these adapters, which is a parallel connector basically. And these are one to two versions, which means one here and two here. And of course these would go to the solar panel, the single end would go to the charge controller. And you can get these in two, three, four panel versions. Of course, when you're connecting panels in parallel, you don't need any adapters. You just plug the negative from one panel into the positive of the other panel, and then the leftover negative to positive wires go to the charge controller. 
There are two different diode configurations that you may find when you start connecting panels together. The diodes are physically the same in both cases, simply it is how they're connected. In a parallel panel, you might use blocking diodes to prevent the energy from one panel going into another panel. I say energy rather than current or voltage because I'm a subscriber to the electron theory. To stop argument, I'll just call it energy. And you would put these diodes at the junction on the positive side where the two panels go together. So we will insert the blocking diode here. And then we want to parallel the two panels. So then we take our parallel device, put it on there like that. And then we would take our wire from our second solar panel and connect our second diode. So we have both solar panels connected together in parallel. There is no need to use blocking diodes on the negative side. Now many panel manufacturers no longer recommend blocking diodes and in fact Renergy does not, at least for their suitcase kits. Because there are some disadvantages, number one is that you're going to have some voltage drop, so that voltage drop issue is kicking us in the face again. A standard silicon rectifier diode is going to drop the voltage by about six tenths of a volt. However, in the solar industry, they use Schottky diodes, and the reason they're preferred is because the voltage drop is a little bit lower, about 0.4 volts. My recommendation consult with your panel manufacturer to determine whether they recommend using blocking diodes or not. You may find that you don't need them. If we connect our solar panels in series, we need to use bypass diodes. Fortunately, many solar panels in the industry already come with bypass diodes built in. And we've seen that earlier by looking at the wiring block of the suitcase solar panel. So in many cases, you don't have to do anything to install the diodes. They're already there. And in this example, when the panels are wired in parallel, the diodes are just dormant. And I have heard some people actually snipping the diodes out because somebody said they caused a fire one time. I think that's more probably of an internet type myth. Maybe it was true in one case of a poor design panel and now all of a sudden everybody knows better and then they snip them. Now if you're using a panel in parallel configuration, you can snip them no problem at all. But if you ever use them in series, you can actually damage your panel by not having them there. As long as they're designed properly, there's no issue, in my view. In normal operation, the bypass diodes do not conduct because the voltage produced across the solar panel reverse biases or turns the diodes off. And all the energy goes through both solar panels in series. Also, since the diodes are not conducting, no energy is going through the diodes, so we are not going to experience a voltage drop issue in normal operation which is yet another advantage for the series connected panels. If, however, one of the panels ceased to operate, say it's in the shade or for some other reason it quit working, then its associated bypass diode will begin to conduct and it will bypass the energy around that panel. Of course, the solar array will now be producing half power because one of the panels are down, but it's still going to give you something. And if the diodes were clipped, the energy will want to try to go through the panel that it's not working, and that can damage it. This concludes my series on using the portable solar panels for your RV. I hope you found this series informative, and maybe it'll give you some insight so that you can install a system like this in your RV. If you need further help, you can always go to the vendors such as Renergy and others. They have staff on hand that can answer most of your questions. As well, make sure to watch the other videos in this series if you haven't, and also visit my website where I expound on some of this information. I will be doing a couple more videos, including how to connect a Renergy up to my Jackery 500 power bank, and as well how to get 20 amps out of the Furion solar port. But I wanted to bring this series to a conclusion.